Great. Huh? Sure. Ready to roll. Uh, I would like to introduce Stephen Pate. He's going to tell us about Browder Plans. A wonderful magic of Browder Plans. Magic of Browder Plans. I thought it was about being rowdy. Rowdy? 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 I'm so, uh, just some background for me, uh, I've been woodworking, woodworking, woodworking not so much, woodworking though, a couple of years, um, for just uh, like three, three years, something like that, so I am by no means an expert on this stuff. Okay, so has anyone used a router plane before? Awesome. For those who haven't, I assume power tool woodworkers mostly? This is not like an electric router. <laughs> uh, if you, uh, if you use an electric router for a surfacing bit, pretty analogous. If you're using cut molding, this will not cut molding. So, uh, if we can get a slime. Uh, oh, uh, basically what this is, it's a blade that cuts a fixed depth from a reference surface. Too simple, right? And we've got large and we've got small router planes. Here's the large, here's a small. I love that small one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Got that kind of in a tricky way at all. That's a story. Um, let's go to another slide. So uh, the biggest ones or the most popular ones are going to be the Stanleys. These were the, the, the most produced, the most distributed. So we got the 71 and the 71 and a half. Difference between those is the 71 has the open throat. So like this one, we got a half moon, whereas the 71 and a half has just completely flat. And let's go to the next slide. Uh, you might find, oh, the, by the way, the Stanley's, the Stanley does not make those anymore. Uh, I don't know when they stop. Um, you can find them on eBay, 30 to 150 bucks, something like that, just depending on how rarity and everything like this. Uh, the Preston's rectangular button, <coughs> if you can find one of these, good luck. Uh, but they're, uh, they're reportedly nice, I've never used one myself. Uh, Go on to another slide. So these are <coughs> large planes. Uh, contemporary model. This is the Veritas. Um, I can't speak. I've never used this one myself. Uh, people I respect recommend it. So there is that. Veritas. I've never seen anything that bad that <coughs> they made. I love their saws. So, and uh, they actually have an inlay kit. So if you're into like string inlays or anything like that, they have uh, tools specifically designed for that. Um, and you might be able to see the, the variety of cutters. Uh, so most of these are just different size square cutters, but this one is a spear tip cutter, uh, which is really, really nice for <coughs> cross grain work. Uh, so if you're cutting gators or something like that. But not absolutely necessary. And uh, another one, these ones are retail for about 150 bucks for the base model. Now, don't these have a little blade that actually, you've got a holder and then a blade that screws into it or uh, the, it up to it? The Veritas, the spear blade, yeah. uh, I believe, screws into it, into the shaft. And that, that's just to make sharpening easier. So they actually have a sharpening jig that you can remove the, the spear point from, attach it to the sharpening jig just to make it sharpen easier. It's just a bent piece of rod that's been sharpened. I've seen people use like that old Allen wrench or something, yeah. grind it down. Uh, come on. No. Oh. Uh, that's actually the last slide. Oh, it is. So that's that explains why you went that down. Oh, there's not another slide. Oh, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's another slide. Okay, so uh, this is the Lee, Lee Nielsen, and you can get these uh, 140 bucks directly from their website. Which is why you not go with the standard because Brandon Lee Nielsen is pretty much the same price. So, yeah. Um, I have absolutely no complaints about it. Fantastic product. And again, they come in the, uh, the open throat and the closed throat, depending upon your needs. Um, let's go to another slide. Now we got the uh, small router plane. So, large router plane, small router plane, and that's pretty much the. Uh, the terminology I'm going to use. So this is a Stanley 271. Um, but uh, if we go to the next slide, we also see that there are Lee Nielsen's. Next slide, we see that there is a Veritas <coughs> small, medium, and miniature. I have no idea why, but uh, <coughs> they exist. And these are some homemade. This is uh, sometimes known as the Old Hatch Tooth. And uh, if you've got a bench grinder and an Allen key and some scrap wood, 
you've got yourself a router client. Um, and one of my personal favorites, the last slide it should be, the poor man's router plane. <laughs> Any Paul Sellers fans? Okay, so this is a chisel in a stick. And I will demonstrate that, hopefully, uh, later on. And I don't think I have any other slides. Yep. Okay. So, um, since we have so much camera trouble, I, I was hoping to, uh, to have this camera pointing down so for close-ups, but that might not be in the cards. So, uh, for your power tool guys, um, a lot of this might not apply as much. Sir? Can I hold the camera for you? Can, you can hold it all you want. I don't think it'll help. The problem oh. is, watch as he moves, how slow it takes for it to refresh. Oh, okay. Screen. But, I mean, we could, we could just point to where you are. At least people in the back room could see a little something there. Yeah. Um, <coughs> So where you're going to find a lot of use for something like this is uh, fine-tuning tenons is going to be one really good application for you. Um, and also for cleaning out the bottom of dados on, say, boxes. <coughs> so if you're cutting, say, a long dado on a uh, piece of plywood, like on your table saw or on your router table, plywood has a tendency to flex. This references off the plywood, so it will always cut a consistent depth. Whereas your cable saw, well, it's, it's Boeing and that sort of thing. So I think the first thing I'm going to demonstrate here is... Steve, do you know how many reasons the open throat versus the closed throat there on the Stanley 71? Well, the open... What, what the difference that one? The open throat is better for cleaning out chips, and the closed throat is better for referencing off of... of um, Smaller work or something. Mostly, yeah. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to try and demonstrate here is a dado. Do you want me to hold that down? Oh, look at you, Mr. Clam. I usually use hold fast for this type of work, but uh, we make do. Part of the board table. <laughs> so basically, the first thing I'm going to do here is where I find I want the dado. I'm going to make a reference line. I'm going to do a through dado. I'm just going to scrub this line here. And now I'm going to grab my big chisel. And has anyone heard of a knife wall? I would hope so. So I'm going to make a little knife wall here. Probably should have brought my inch and a half chisel, but mistakes were made. And the astute among you will recognize that I'm using low-grade knotted pine because I'm cheap. <laughs> and I might have done this actually in the wrong order. So what I'm also going to do is um, transcribe my line here just roughly I have my doing this. We're going this way. Okay, where would you get your mark on that? Uh, I got this. Um, it was on sale at uh, Woodcraft. Oh, okay. But that was the Woodcraft in Phoenix, Arizona. Where's, where's the best Woodcraft to here? <clears throat> I don't know where we're at. Yeah. Frank, yeah. Frank, yeah. Frank, yeah. Frank, yeah. Frank, Frank, yeah. And there's, isn't there one in Birmingham? Most people in China have been wondering if Franklin and Nashville is kind of the best. So, now, now I've got a nice little notch right there, so I'm kind of going to reach under it. And just this is the uh, my pretend shelf that I'm going to dado into here. Just make a little neck there. And one of the magic things about this, this marking knife, it's a double-sided one, so I can go from either direction. And of course, be sure to screw your tools all about the work surface, because uh, Woodworking. Look like a real woodworker. woodworking is much, much more efficient when you have tools everywhere that you can't find. <laughs> 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 
And so I'm just going to try and define my lines here so I don't um, go over them. So this is my, my final cut line, and so I'm just kind of wedging it out just a little bit to, to protect that final line. Controls the depth of the blade. And this is my final stop right here. So it's just basically a, uh, a block that stops the blade from going down. And then I have my adjustment knob, which controls the depth, right? So I get it to the depth I want. And so I'm going to go, well, maybe, let's, let's not be too ambitious there. And then I'm going to set my stop. And I'm actually going to back it off quite a bit. And, oh, actually, I've only got the, the final depth. One of the beautiful things about the router plane is that it doubles as a marking gauge. So we can go in there and mark our final stop. I'll do the same on this side. Which is just the depth of your data. Just the depth of the data, yeah. Now, most of the work is actually not being done with the router plane. Most of the work is going to be done with the chisel. And in order to accomplish this, I'm basically just going to chop down and chop wedges. And there's, there's other ways we can go about that. We can just go across grain. Could you use your saw? We could use the saw. The saw's an excellent choice. What can I think of that? Because I'm distracted. Because Does it, uh, would the chisel give you a little cleaner walls? Or do you think the saw will give you a clean wall? Considering this is a data and there's going to be something so uh, in it, so it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. But yeah, the chisel would give you a cleaner wall. And um, the problem with the saw, too, is you can only go generally so far with the saw unless you're setting up like a save. Oh, right. Um, well, you can use like a stair saw. Uh, that'd be a great. Put a temporary fence, use a stair saw with that. Yeah. Or uh, so you know, stock data is would be difficult to do using the, oh, the saw. Well yeah, well unless you, you go at an angle. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So the 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 knife wall we've done there with the, the initial knife wall is going to help out quite a bit with the saw. It's also a little bit reluctant to use the saw because I have to clean this up when I'm done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't bring it. There may be a broom in the closet there. I'll check here. Well, I, got, I got this little thing. I neglected the dust pan uh, in my haste to, to get out of here. Oh, we'll just sweep up with these papers. Everybody knows the mirror trick, right? Yes. Okay. Describe the mirror trick. Okay, uh, the saw creates a lovely reflection of your workpiece, and if you line up the reflection with the the real piece, it should create a completely straight line. Oh. And if it's it's off, it won't be a straight line. Oh, cool. And if you have a heavy bench, it doesn't move this much. Yes. Yeah, this wobbly table absorbs a lot of the energy. <laughs> and, the and so we can, we can kind of uh, just attack this. We want to be careful not to go past our lines, but uh, it's it, it's pretty easy. I, I like to kind of when I'm doing it this way, cross grain, keep the the chisel canted. And I know you're not supposed to. He stepped out of the way. So. <laughs> and with the half inch chisel. Good thing I brought this. I, uh, I think now would be a good, good time to mention how uh, you 
made the data the same width as your chisel and your tools, so that you don't have to do a lot of extra, you know, a lot of extra carving and cutting and that kind of stuff. If wherever possible, if you can make, if you have a half inch chisel, make sure your shelf, your board that's going to go in the data, half inch. That way, it matches your chisel, and so it just eases the work for you. And if you want to go with the the router instead of the chisel, just we can get quite a bit more control that way. Just crank it up, and we have the final depth stop already set. So we know when to stop and go from the outside in so we don't blow out. Loosen, slight turn. The chisel can be faster, but it's it's nowhere near as precise. You know. And you can do this with a small router plane too, um, and you can do it with the uh, the improvised router planes. So any router plane will do this. It's just some have nicer features. Generally, what I found with the uh, when I was doing the poor man's router, that's just a chisel driven through a stick. Um, you kind of tend to score where you're going to, and it, it, it will stop itself. Before it, it um, trying, to, trying to think how to describe this. So, if I've got a spot that's too high for the router to cut, it will tell me it will leave a score underneath that part, and I just come in with a chisel, hack it down a little bit, and then go back to the uh, the router. So it only cuts so much in pass, I guess. And that's why, which is also why, even with this, you have to just increment it down just a little bit yeah. at a time. And I'm going a little bit faster than I'd like to, just for the uh, sake of not boring you guys too much. I could watch this all day. But uh, yeah, generally about a quarter turn is when I go. And of course, the more you take off, the rougher the pass is going to be. And like I said, if you're doing this, if you're uh, tuning up a, a table saw data or something like that, Basically, same thing, just go in after the fact. And yeah, so using this in conjunction with your power tools to mm -hmm. get that final uh, that final depth set the proper. Now, I'm getting a lot of fuss here, so it's just a simple matter of coming in with a marking knife and uh, severing those, or maybe a chisel. Get rid of the fuzzy bits. Cheap white pine. Pardon? Cheap white pine. Cheap white pine. Yeah. Well, I'd be happy to do this with maple if you'd buy it. Why not? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Can you have now, I did bring in a little bit of hardwood. I uh, brought in a scrap of poplar and a scrap of walnut. I'm hoping I can get away with the poplar. So I might use that walnut for something eventually. But when, the, uh, when you're doing the improvised drivers, softwood just does not cut it. And we're getting pretty close to depth. It does make these lovely cross grain shavings, which are not nearly as fun as end grain shavings, but uh, they'll do it a pinch. You can start your barbecue with them. If you're uh, cutting a groove going with the grain, uh, will it curl up the shavings with your router plane? Um, Probably not, because it doesn't have the chip breaker or yeah, it, have a close throw. It, it, it has no throw. Yeah. So, um, one thing I have used this for uh, in that capacity is doing stock rabbits. Oh, yeah. So I've got a, a number 78 rabbiting plane, but the front and the back of the of the of the rabbit have to be cut out some other way. Right. So it only goes so far. And so basically I just measure the plane and say this is where I need to stop, this is where I need to go, and I set it for the depth and, and, and notch it out. 
mostly with chisels, but do the, the flat out passes with the with the rubber. And I'm going to go ahead and call that good. Does this actually fit? Close. Goddamn. Yeah, with a persuader, we can get it in there. But uh, I'm not going to go that far today. And the next thing I want to demonstrate is how these can be helpful in lap joints and with tennis. And I'm going to do that by cutting a lap joint. Now, this is kind of fun. Normally, especially on end grain, you might do this with just a, uh, like a tenon saw, something like that. Oh, and uh, a, a feature that I have not demonstrated or shown is to see these holes here, nice little grooves. These are for, theoretically, this fence. So that's this can attach to the base of it. Um, the Stanleys just have screw holes. And another technique you can use is attaching a wooden base to the, to the sole of this. And that can give you a lot more surface area, right? So, um, let's see, what am I doing? Let's go ahead all the way to depth. And I'm just going to score a nice little line here. Now, if you have, say, a lap joint that exceeds the capacity of your, of your tenon saw, or maybe you're doing something like um, a breadboard, you can use your router plane to get you a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, length on your, on your joint, uh, simply by doing a breadboard. <coughs> and so here's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to make a cut here, and this is not my final cut, this is just an incremental cut. Doesn't even have to be perfect. Don't even care if it's straight. You're really just wasting out all the extra material. Get it roughly to depth, and get the biggest chisels you can find. Go in between your, the top and the final depth. And that's a nice chase. <clears throat> so that's just a relief cut. <sighs> and there was a knot there, which is unfortunate. Really see the benefit of that. 
And I think that's uh, that, that's more or less demonstrated. I think if everybody gets a picture of that. Um, let us do so. One thing you haven't talked about the other thing you can do with the rider plane is you can follow a curve, whereas most everything else is very difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, in particular with uh, with this guy right here, this fence. Actually, it's a double-sided fence. It's got a flat face and it's got a curved face. Now, I, I don't do much really rabbiting with this, and I don't do any um, haven't done any curve cur cur work, so I wouldn't know how to demonstrate that, and I wouldn't be comfortable with that. But I guess that's why they have that uh, like a string inlay set that uses a router plane uh -huh. and a following fence. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw a really fun yeah, one. Perfect and stuff around the body, yeah. A really fun one uh, a few months ago. A guy was actually using a jig and dividers to make string inlays. So I thought that was fairly interesting. So um, what I'm going to demonstrate here, hopefully, got a chunk of popper. And I've only got one side surfaced at the moment. Uh, the rest is just rough cut. So I'm going to use a half inch chisel here. Now, um, also, half inch auger bit. The thing I want to do. You got the big one, that's cool. I'm gonna, you want to go slightly above the angle of the bevel. So you want it to be pointing down just a little bit, right? So about like that. And. Is that basically the same size auger bit as your as your chisel? Yes. Yeah, and you want it to be a really, really tight fit. Could I have a volunteer hold this cable steady? <laughs> um so a half inch chisel, a half inch bit. Yeah, and then because the chisel actually has a, a bit of thickness, right. it's going to, to put a lot of pressure on the side walls. And that's what you want. You want it to be a really, really tight fit, which is why you don't want to use soft woods. And I'm, I'm probably tempting fate using, using popper. And am I through yet? No. And this doesn't have to be pretty because this is a tool, and it's only going to last for probably one or two projects. And there are many, many distinct disadvantages of this. <laughs> Primarily, the adjustment. So we're going to take this, bevel down, and hopefully we should be able to pound it in place. Set it on top of the pine, that way you don't have to worry about going to